Welcome everyone, we're here in Reforma Avenue and we're here surrounded by all these awesome things, a cleat from the World Cup, uh, emblem of Mexico's cleat and the cup, the World Cup, um, replicated with cool little designs within it. Um, so we're here and the World Cup is over, France won, um, but we're here to talk for the last time a little bit more about Russia about their customs, about culture, different things um, that are, are specific to Russia. So let's start off a little bit with their money. So in Russia, the ruble is what you're going to, to use to get around, to move, um, to pay. It's their currency. And the ruble was, it dates back all the way to 1704. Um, in 1704, is, uh, it was made out of silver. Um, it was not um, physical or, or paper money um, until 1992. So it's had over 500 years of history, but only recently, very recently, was it converted into something that was more paper, more physical um, for people to use. The ruble goes in paper from five all the way to 10,000 rubles, and which is probably something 10,000 can't imagine having that number on a piece of paper, uh, but it's definitely something, comparatively speaking, one ruble is equal to about um, 60 cents, more or less, in Mexico, or about four rubles is one peso. Um, so you can get an idea of what you may be working with if you were ever to go and travel to Russia. Um, another, I guess, cultural difference um, would be their, their interaction with other people. So in Russia, it is not customary at all to smile to people when you see them, if you don't know them. So you're gonna smile when you see a person, maybe in interactions, a person that you've met previously, but never are you going to smile at someone that you randomly see on the street. Um, also, if you ever visit someone's house um, or someone, either you know them or you don't, always take a pair of slippers or be prepared to put on slippers when you get to their house. So they have a custom that's very similar to Asian or Oriental culture, where when you arrive to a house, you take your shoes off, um, but you put on slippers in order to kind of hide your feet, but at the same time respect the environment of the home that you're visiting. Um, so that's something a little bit different culturally that you'll find in Russia. Something else um, is gifts. In Russia, it's super, super, super um, specific and important uh, to give gifts. And you may receive gifts, but also if you're ever going to visit a family or friends or even uh, an, a company or a business relationship, you should always take some trinket or a gift, something small or something large uh, to represent that kind of warmness and that thank you for receiving you uh, to those people. Another very different um, tradition is that everywhere, everywhere, everywhere in Russia, they drink tea. So tea is maybe the most emblematic drink, although we may recognize vodka as the emblematic drink of Russia, but tea is something that they drink in the morning, in the evening, with food, without food, um, at work. It's, 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 a, it's a kind of environment that they take take on in order to socialize, but also to enjoy the different flavors and um, the savoriness of what is Russian tea. So these are just a couple of different little customs, a little bit about their money. Stay tuned in the next segment. We'll talk a lot more about the different things that you can find in Russia or that you would find if you ever visited. This is Feedback Learning. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. ¿Qué es Lernix? Workouts. Interbranches. 
Massive Activities Learning Tools E-Learnex Special Activities Descubre, vive, siente en inglés En Learnex Aprende inglés en Learnex Inglés para siempre 50-01-96-42 Welcome back everyone, we're here still in Reforma Avenue surrounded by these very emblematic World Cup um, figures for the, the end of the World Cup and the end of this bimester. So what I'm going to talk a little bit about now are the holidays that are celebrated in Russia. So the first one that is the most representative and the most celebrated in Russia is New Year's. They celebrate it same as um, parts of the rest of the world, which is the 1st of January. And it is celebrated very family oriented with a lot of fireworks, a lot of food and tradition. And of course, as, it's, as we've noted in the last segment, a lot of gifts because it's very, very Russian to give gifts. Now, the second most celebrated holiday is going to be their Christmas. Their Christmas is the Orthodox um, Christmas and it's not celebrated on the 25th of December as it is um, in the more Roman Catholic tradition. It's celebrated the 6th or the 7th of January. Um, the date varies depending on the Orthodox calendar. So, of course, in these traditions, there's always food, there's always um, amazing, delicious things. So obviously we have to talk a little bit about what is the, the Russian food. So first is the most famous, which is their soup. They use it during um, maybe appetizer as the first course of a meal, and it's called borscht. The borscht is a very thick, and they call it porridge, not soup, because of the consistency. The next uh, food, which I've personally tasted, and it's delicious, is stroganoff. Stroganoff is usually made out of beef, and it has noodles, and it's a very, um, a very rich, very thick um, a consistency. Now, the tradition or the, I guess, history behind stroganoff is that it was used because the beef was found um, extras. So everything that wasn't previously used, they put it in the, the stroganoff, and then created noodles and had this kind of pasta, lasagna kind of like, uh, dish. The next thing um, is blini. Now blini is the Russian equivalent of a crepe. The crepes um, that are made in Russia can have anywhere from uh, sweet ones with fruits and also salty ones with vegetables or beef. But something that maybe isn't as known in the rest of the world is that some of their blinis, blinis um, have also caviar. So they have a very, very uh, rich palate, if you will, um, the Russians. So the last little food or um, consumption that is eaten in Russia would be their caviar. Now the whole world knows that caviar is expensive, but in Russia there's two types of caviar. There's the red caviar and then there's the black caviar. The red caviar is made out of salmon um, and it's a little bit less expensive. It's a little more um, accessible, if you will. You can find it in shops, in um, different restaurants. And then there's the second kind, which is the black caviar. The black caviar is the traditional delicacy um, for a finer palate and a finer wallet, if you will, um, which is made out of beluga. Now, the I've never personally tasted caviar, but they say that it is an acquired taste, although um, it's something that you should always try at least once in your life. Now, we can't talk about Russia without talking about their vodka. The Russians are very famous because of their traditional uh, spirit and drink, which is vodka. The vodka is not drank or it's not drunk traditionally with um, other mixtures, orange juice or cranberry juice or what we traditionally want to mix vodka with. Um, they take it in a short shot glass and they sip on it, similar to the way that uh, Mexicans consume tequila. So you sip on it and you um, give toasts to women, to life, um, to everything. And so with that, nazdalovye, or salut, 
as they say in Russia, when they give a toast with vodka. Guys, it's been amazing. This Bymaster has been filled with a ton of information. Um, and I hope you all have learned. We here at LearnX do this for you all. Um, this Feedback LearnX show is for you. So don't forget to tune in every Thursday night at 9.15. And in the next Bymaster, surprise me. So, Ochen Kuzna. Thank you and goodbye, guys. See you next time. Feedback Learning. English Forever. Estamos en sintonía. Feedback Learning. English Forever. Feedback Learning. Feedback Learning.